it's such a simple um, you know, topic. And gosh, there's no way I can, I can do a talk that will be appropriate for everybody. So for those of you who will only like my first slide and everything else will be either boring or go over your head, I do apologize, but stir at the first slide. What I'm going to do actually is I, I sort of handpicked a few HIV G therapy trials that are currently in the clinic or about to go into the clinic. And I, I sort of um, spoke to the people who were involved in them, got, got them to give me kind of like a top secret latest um, updates, and um, then I altered the slides beyond recognition. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So um, this is probably the most important slide because this is kind of everything that I know about why I think gene therapy has a place in this discussion about how to cure HIV. So, some bullet points. First of all, we know that HIV causes AIDS. It's very simple because it destroys the CD4 positive T cells that are such a key component of our immune system. And the idea of gene therapy is we want to make at least some of the CD4 positive T cells resistant to HIV so that in that way, if there's more HIV resistant cells in the body, there's going to be less HIV virus. But also importantly, and I think this is the point that maybe sometimes people don't get, is that by engineering these T cells to be HIV resistant, we don't just you know, um, stop HIV spreading in them. What we do is we, we preserve these T cells and we give the body's immune system a chance to kind of regroup and become restored and quite honestly fight back at HIV because this is what our immune system is supposed to be doing. And so basically, um, Gene therapists talk a lot about functional cure, and my definition of a functional cure is we want to empower the body to fight back and control HIV. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, um, maybe most of you know this, but we have two choices when we think about what cells to make that are HIV resistant. We want to protect the CD4 positive T cells, so we can actually either go in and engineer the T cells themselves, or we can kind of go back in time and we can engineer the precursor cells, the hematopoietic stem cells in your bone marrow that give rise to the T cells and all the rest of the cells in your body. And, um, you know, doctors are very good at getting both T cells and hematopoietic stem cells out of people, engineering them, keeping them alive and putting them back in. So this is something that we can really sort of piggyback on. Um, how do we make a cell resistant to HIV? There's kind of two simple choices, I think. Either you put something in the cell, the cell that will stop HIV infecting it or replicating in it. And one of the examples that I'm going to be talking about is a fusion and entry inhibitor called C46. Or conversely, you take away something that the cell needs. And the most famous example in the world of gene therapy is the CCR5 co-recession molecule. If you take that away, HIV can no longer get into cells so the cells are now resistant. Um, of course, no talk on HIV cure or gene therapy would be complete without a shout out to Timothy, um, still sadly the only person to be cured of HIV. But he was cured of HIV because he received hematopoietic stem cells, bone marrow stem cells from a donor who was resistant to HIV. Um, he did that because he had leukemia, but overnight all of his stem cells went from being sort of HIV susceptible to being HIV resistant. And so as gene therapists, we want to know if we can try and um, recapitulate that by making the patient's own stem cells resistant. Okay, so how do we do it? Um, so basically, my, my blue man, I always have a blue man for some reason, you, you either take the T cells or the hematopoietic stem cells out, out of somebody. That little red star is to remind me um, to say that it's not as simple sometimes as just putting a needle in somebody and taking out the cells. Sometimes we have to retreat people with a drug that will mobilize the cells and make it easier for us to get the cells out. Then once the cells are in the lab, we can, for example, treat them with things called zinc finger nucleases, which are like little genetic scissors that will kind of cut the CCR5 gene. Or alternatively, we could use another approach that's sometimes called RNA interference, which also blocks the function of CCR5. And then those cells can be returned to the patient. And the little green star down, down there is to remind me that Again, it's, sometimes it's not as simple as just returning the cells back into a patient. We can do things to make sure that those engineered cells really can find their way home. And so we can give drugs that we say can condition the patient. All right, this is the worst slide. Um, but gosh, it's got a lot of information on it. So this is um, an update I got from Sangamo Biosciences, who are sort of leading the charge. 
I think, in terms of gene therapy for HIV. And they're the company that are using zinc finger nucleases to knock out CCR5. And they have several ongoing trials engineering T cells with zinc finger nucleases. So, what does this complicated chart tell us? Well, so, first of all, um, the only trial that's still kind of open and recruiting is the one down at the very bottom. I'll try over here. Although my eyesight's not that good, I might have to cheat and look over here. Um, and, you can, and what's interesting is if you look in this third column about the different study populations, it tells you that there's been a sort of an evolution of how Sandalo have been thinking about recruiting patients and indeed how the field has. has. You know, early on the idea was gene therapy, woo, it's scary, it's new, so we need to go into patients who have multi drug resistance, you know, they, they failed lots of regimens. Well, there's not that many patients. You'll see that early on in the trials, they managed to enroll zero people in this cohort. Um, then further on, um, you can you can enroll patients who are either typically a remit, but you can partition them into CD4 counts above 500, below 500, or that sort of in between area. And then as the trials have kind of progressed down here, you'll see that the companies start to introduce a drug called cytoxin. And this is, is a way to make to increase the ability of the engineered T cells to come back into the patients. It kind of makes space for them. And then the final thing I'll point out is that um, several of these trials have what's called an ATI, a treatment interruption. And this is one of the, you know, it's a slightly controversial aspect of doing any sort of HIV cure trial. It's the idea that you would take a patient off antiretroviral therapy and kind of, you know, ask, is the virus coming back or have we had an impact? Additionally, um, allowing HIV levels to rise in the body is also um, hypothesized to allow the HIV resistant cells to be selected for, so it kind of has a dual purpose. Okay, that's Simo. Um, a shout out for a trial that I've been involved in. Um, uh, my group at USC, together with um, a clinical team at City of Hope, we're going to have a similar trial that hopefully is going to open in January. It's been a long time coming. I've been talking about it for about five years. But we're taking the same zinc finger nucleases, but this time we're treating hematopoietic stem cells, which potentially will give a longer effect. So uh, we've done all the paperwork, we've got it all ready, it's all going to go to the FDA, so fingers crossed it will all be approved and we'll be able to start recruiting people for that. Okay, so two other trials I want to talk about real quickly. Um, Calimune, another um, California-based um, biotech company, have a clinical trial that's ongoing using um, what's called a lentiviral vector. This is a way to add things to a cell. And their vector is a combination vector. It has two things in it. It has um, what's called an shRNA, basically something to block the action of CCR5. And then it also has this entry inhibitor, C46. And one of the things I like about uh, what Calumine are doing is this, that they, they are kind of making a choice between T cells and hematopoietic stem cells. They're actually treating them both at the same time. They sort of take their patients and they, they, they harvest both the T cells and the stem cells, treat them both independently, and then put everything back. So they're really hopefully covering all the bases with that. Um, complicated slide, but I just want to highlight that um, the um, individuals who, who can enroll in this trial have to have previously been on um, art therapy, but are not currently taking it, either due to toxicity or because of treatment fatigue. And um, they're sort of halfway through the three different groups of um, patients that they want to enroll. Okay, and then the final trial I'll just tell you about, this is one well that, um, again, I think it's going to start early in 2015 from the Fred Hutch, um, from the group I'm involved with at um, the Defeat HIV Collaboratory. Well, this is also a lentiviral vector, and it's a combination vector. It's got the C46 entry inhibitor in it. But in addition, it's also got what I'm calling the selection gene. And this is a novel approach that the group are taking to try and increase the frequency of the, H of the um, HIV resistant cells in the patient after the cells have gone in. And um, this is sort of piggybacking on a um, HSC transplant treatment for lymphoma. So the only patients who could be enrolled in this trial or AIDS lymphoma patients. And that kind of just says it there. Okay, so I'm going to skip to my summary. Um, so what have I told you? Gene therapy or gene therapists uh, can engineer either the CD4 T cells that HIV infects or the stem cells that give rise to them, or both. Um, CCR5 is a popular approach to thinking about how to make cells HIV resistant, and also there's the C46 entry inhibitor. 
Um, there's also drugs that are being used to help the engineered cells return home. Use sulfur if it's a stem cell or cytoxin if it's a T cell. And here's the question we're all very curious about. Can HIV kind of play Darwin? I didn't say play God, but I thought that might be objectionable. So, so <laughs> play Darwin and select for the HIV resistant cells, especially if there's um, an ARP treatment interruption. And then also, can engineered cells also be selected in the body using the drug? So I'll just end on a slide that I'm sure is familiar to most of you, that I, you know, a great resource for following these, these trials is the Treatment Action Group website. Or clinicaltrials.gov, which is a bit more um, less kind of friendly. Um, or the Defeat HIV website also has some good information. Okay. How did I do? Great. All right. <laughs>